Hello there and welcome to another video and in this video what I'm going to be doing is following up on the previous video I did in which I did an experiment in which I claimed shows that the earth is a sphere in which I measured the angle of elevation of the sun and compared it to the how far south the sun is from my location so I want to justify the claims I made in that video in this video so first of all, what I want to talk about is lines of latitude and what they mean. And I'm going to talk about them on a spherical Earth first, and then I'm going to have a look at what they would mean on a flat Earth and think about what the difference is. So you can see here, I've got a diagram that was supposed to be the spherical Earth. Now this is kind of like a cross section of the Earth. And what I want you to try and imagine is that this location up at the top is the equator, is a point on the equator. So you're kind of looking at the sun, not from its usual angle, but kind of on, it, on its side. So this line going up and down here is going to, it's kind of a corresponding to the equator or a line going right through the middle of the earth. So supposing at the left hand side here, this would be the North Pole and down at the bottom, that would be the South Pole. And this line here is a line of longitude going from North to South along which it is midday or solar noon. So the person standing here at the equator, the sun's directly overhead, and this green line here is the tangent. So this represents the local horizontal at that location. So if someone's standing here, we'd say that the angle of incidence of sunlight is zero degrees because it's zero degrees from the vertical, or we could say it's an angle of elevation of 90 degrees because it's 90 degrees from the horizontal. And what I've drawn here are locations which are 10 degrees north, 20 degrees north, 30, and so on. Now in a spherical earth, these all correspond not, these lines of latitude don't just correspond to locations. They call us their angles to do with the sun and also um, the shape of the earth. So you can see that these locations form an angle with the center of the earth of 10 degrees and then with 20 degrees and so on. Um, but what they also do is they tell you what the angle of incidence of sunlight would be on an equinox at solar noon at that location. And I'll try and uh, demonstrate what I mean by that here. So if I rotate this so that I make the, the location which is 10 degrees up at the top, and it looks like this. Now what I can do is I can create a, a sun being parallel to the one at the, the equator remember all the sun on a spherical earth the sunlight's all coming in at the same angle all the lights parallel so we can measure the angle of incidence of sunlight now at that location which is 10 degrees so it's the same as the angle that the the line from that location straight to the center of the earth forms with a line from the equator straight to the center of the earth. So the so the latitude is telling you these different things. It's it's all connected on a spherical earth. It's to do with the instant. It's to do with the direction of sunlight. It's to do with your location and so on. Uh, similarly, we could go around again. Um, Suppose I go around to say 30 degrees this time. Go to there, and then I can make a parallel sunbeam to there. And I can measure the angle of incidence of sunlight at that location, which is 30 degrees. So if someone's standing here, this green line is their local horizontal. That's their vertical line going straight up and down like that. And the sunlight is now at an incidence, angle of incidence of 30 degrees. And it's also at an angle of elevation of 60 degrees. 
Okay, so angle of elevation is measured from the horizontal, angle of incidence measured from the vertical, and these two should always add up to 90 degrees. So that's the case on the um, on the equinox. Now there's one other important point to point out to make here, which is that lines of latitude are equally spaced out according to their degrees on a spherical Earth. So for every 10 degrees north, you're going the same distance, which is what we see on the Earth. And let's look at another situation. Supposing we look at a situation where the sun has now moved south. So suppose it's now 20 degrees south of the equator. So this is the equator here now. And now the sun has moved to here. Um, so I can name this line minus 20 degrees. Now I can do the same thing. I can rotate this so that the equator is now at the top of our diagram. And again, I can move a sunbeam to there so that they're both parallel. And I can measure that at the equator, when the sun is 20 degrees south, at the equator, it will be an angle of incidence of 20 degrees in the sky. And let's rotate it further so we make the let's make the 10 degrees up at the top of the diagram now so I can have the sun coming into this location and put this here and the angle of incidence is now 30 degrees so, angle of incidence on a spherical Earth of the sunlight at midday, at solar noon, tells you the angular distance between where you are and the sun. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter if the sun moves south of the equator or north of the equator. This will always work because lines of latitude are equally spaced out on the Earth. So it doesn't matter if the sun goes north or south, you can always use your, the distance between yourself and the sun to predict the angle of incidence of sunlight, and you take that away from 90 degrees, and that'll tell you the angle of elevation. I'll put that there, which is about, about 60 degrees. It's a little bit off. Sometimes that goes a wee bit funny. Huh? Um, so anyway, basically what, what, what these diagrams show you is that there's this simple relationship between the latitude of your location, the latitude of your sun. If you know the difference between them as an angle, that angle will be the angle of incidence of sunlight at midday at your location. If you take that number away from 90, that gives you the angle of elevation, which is how high the sun is above the horizontal. And that will be true at any of these locations all the way around here. Right, so that's how that works on a spherical Earth. So let's have a look how it works, how this would work on a flat Earth. Here we go here. Right. So say the sun is here at this point that's labelled D. So this is the equator. So suppose this is going north of the equator to the left and south of the equator to the right. Now I've drawn in drawn on lines of sunlight that are at, to the points where you would get that angle of incidence. So for example, you can see here at 60 degrees, the angle of incidence of sunlight is 60 degrees and the angle of elevation is 30 degrees. Now the problem is on a flat 
diagram or a flat earth. If the line, if your latitude isn't just about where you are, but is also telling you the angle of incidence of sunlight at midday on an equinox, then lines of latitude have, can't be evenly spaced out. They have to get, for every 10 degrees you add on, you have to go further. And that's just to do with the basic geometry of, um, of the flat earth. And if I go out, you can see how far you've got to go. Um, I don't want to be that 50 degrees, that's a, bit, that was a mistake, right. To get to 80 degrees, you've got to go all the way out to here. Now, if this is a height of 3,000 miles, then this, then two of these squares is a thousand. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So a latitude of eighty degrees on a flat Earth would have to be seventeen thousand miles north of the equator, um, which is just absolutely ridiculous. But you could, all, you can kind of get this to work on a flat Earth. Though, if the Earth was that massive and the Sun was always over the equator, then you could get lines of latitude to correspond to the position of the Sun in the sky at midday. But the problem is, for the flat Earth, the Sun moves. It goes north and it goes south of the equator. So similarly, if we look here, if the sun moved from here to here, so it's now at a latitude of 20 degrees south, then we can work out what the angle of elevation or the angle of incidence of sunlight would be. Say, let's do it for 50 degrees. Not to there, to there, that's it. So the angle of incidence of sunlight when the, the sun moved to 20 degrees south of the equator would be 57.86 degrees, say 58 degrees. However, a spherical Earth model would predict, let's see where is it? Solstice, and here we go. So, suppose we do it for 50 degrees. This one, um, here it is. That's it. And now we put a little. A parallel sunbeam there. The angle of incidence of sunlight is 70 degrees, which is the angular distance between your location and the sun, between that location and the sun. So if you're 50 degrees north and the sun is 20 degrees south, you would expect that the sun on a spherical earth would have an angle of incidence at midday of 70 degrees. So it would have an angle of elevation of 20 degrees. Now that doesn't work on the flat earth. You get a different answer. You can see here that the angle of incidence is 58 degrees. Now that would mean that if your latitude was connected to the angle of incidence of the sun at midday, that would mean that your latitude on this day would have to be 38 degrees. You see, on a flat Earth, if your latitude was connected with the sun, then 
your latitude would have to be changing on a daily basis. The latitude associated with your location would have to be changing every day. But it isn't. We know that our latitude at any location stays the same every day. So this is why I said in the experiment, if you can use your latitude to predict what the angle of incidence in there for the angle of elevation of the sun will be at midday at your location at any day of the year, and if you can do that anywhere on Earth, then there is no way that Earth is flat. It must be a sphere. I don't really see any way out of that. Because like I said, on a flat Earth, to have this connection, your latitude would have to be changing every day. And it's not. And there's no conspiracy in the world that could make this work. I mean, even if they could make it, contrive to make it work a little bit, they couldn't contrive to make it work everywhere, every day of the year. It's impossible. Unless they're messing with everything, every aspect of our existence, even our very perception of the sun. Well, you know, th well, there's two problems with that. I mean, if, if we can't look at the world and make sense of it, then how is it we've managed to make such technological advancements? I mean, that, that's proof that we are capable of making sense of the world. Also, if you believe that they're messing with your perception to such an extent, they're messing with every aspect of our life, some mad conspiracy, then it would mean that you couldn't really reach any conclusion about anything at all, including the conclusion that the Earth is flat. So you're undermining your own position by saying that. So if you're saying that we can't trust this information, if we can't even trust ourselves to measure the angle of elevation of the sun and compare it with our latitude and the latitude of the sun, if they're messing with the world to that extent, then how do you know the Earth's flat? How do you know anything? And if we can't trust ourselves to angle, measure the angle of elevation and to know basic things like the latitude of our location, the latitude of the sun, then I'm afraid the Earth isn't flat because you can go out any day of the year and predict what the angle of elevation of the sun will be at your location based on your latitude and the latitude of the sun. So... As I said in the previous video, this is an experiment that you can use to either prove or disprove that the Earth is a sphere. And it's a very simple experiment. Just get an, um, a smartphone, download a theolodite, and go out a few different times and at midday and measure the angle of elevation of the sun. And like I said, if you can get it within about a degree or so, then you know the Earth is a sphere. I mean, if the Earth was flat, it could be out by up to about 20 degrees. There's no way you could be getting it within a degree every day of the year at any location. So, that this is an experiment to determine whether the Earth is a sphere or not.